and welcome to episode 27. Of course, Party Blood Drive, at least it should be. We're actually going to start chapter 10 today and not have to refilm anything. Yay! So, Blood Drive, chapter 10, reparations. Yay. I'm not sure what this chapter's going to be about, but in the last episode, anyway, um, Miss Coon absorbed Sachi, so I think she's out of the way. And now we're about to open a door and go in in the Nirvana, eh, whatever thing, should be in here. I think. Aiko and I had progressed through Heavenly Host, guided by the whims of the book, the school changing and shifting around us bit by bit. We were now faced with a peculiar marked door. Peculiar. Peculiar. You. Can't even say the word. Pe Let me read it again. Pacu. You. I can, I can say this. I can normally say this. Pecu. No, screw it. Peculiar. Peculiarly. Oh, fuck it. I don't care. <sighs> Get tongue tied. I'm recording a lot. Now we're outside? Why? It's way too quiet right now. Maybe I should take this opportunity to ask a few questions. Hi, go. Miss Kuhn's your sister, right? That's right. We, Heavenly Hill survivors, really don't know her very well. Like, we have no memory of her. Even though she's your teacher? Yeah, so could you tell me a little more about Miss Kuhn? What kind of person is she, for example? She's pretty much perfect. Calling her a genius wouldn't even begin to describe her. She's basically the living per, uh, personification of the ultimate human ideal. Ideal, huh? See, it all started when her book became a worldwide bestseller, and she was only 11 years old. But her success her successes weren't just in literature. She also excels at science, math, theater, business, economics, not to mention research, publication, and management. The widespread success of the PL Promotions Co. Inc. is all her doing. That only happened after she took over as CEO. My family, the Niwas, got rich beyond their wildest dreams through the royalties of her book sales. But it's also thanks to all that money that we've grown apart. My parents ensued raising us in a favor of raising, of using my sister's money to travel the world, an excursion from which they still have yet to return. Oh. Oh, I had no idea. You do still love your sister though, right? She certainly seems to love me, but I despise her. For as long as I can remember, everything, everything, everything I've done with my life has been on the rails generously donated by her. She never even, oh, she's never even given me a chance to choose my own destiny. Well, that's depressing. Take a quick uh, drink here, now that we're in a underwear shop from what I can tell. I don't know why we're here. I don't want to be here. Let's go with it. Let's go with it. Once we were, uh, she and I were in a. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Once, when she and I were out at a shopping mall, looking to buy new underwear, I was right. There was an incident while I was trying on a new bra. I like this one. I think I'll take it. Hmm. She just stuck her head into the dressing room through the curtain. Oh my. And then, as if it weren't bad enough, she came right on in. Oh, no, 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 come now. I, if you don't coordinate, your whole ensemble will be ruined. And don't try to tell me you're too young to consider yourself with such things. Age will pass you by and hold you down if you're not careful. You've had the saying, you've heard the saying, right? That unpreparedness is one's greatest enemy? Well, this is your moment to show unpreparedness who's boss. Try this one. She left the dressing room for only a moment, brought now and uh, but now handed me a lux luxurious, elegant, lacy bra from the gap between the curtains. This isn't... I complained, but I knew I'd eventually have to try it on anyway, so I just broke down and did it. See, it totally suits you, and it's my treat, so I hope you enjoy it. Oh, you're just so cute. You'll do anything I say, won't you? Well, you are a good girl, so you understand that my suggestions are best, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Coon's smile was so pure and sweet, it was almost scary. 
She has all the privilege and all the pleasures of life. Plus, our parents love to boot. Everything goes to her and nothing comes to me. She had me in a pretty dark place for a while. In fact, but right when things were looking their darkest, I came to discover the, the existence of spirit items, and I was instantly hooked. One thing led to another, and before I knew it, I'd become a certifiable occult nut. You can't even imagine how excited I was when I learned that I had spiritual power my sister didn't. This is my world. It's a source of strength that I came upon fair and square. My spirit item auction sales hit some pretty extravagant numbers too, which certainly helped. But then she did it again. She managed to get a foothold in this field too, and instantly became a bigger name than I was. And that really pisses me off. I had no idea. She certainly does seem larger than life. Well, you know, in all honesty, I don't really know her all that well myself. Uh, righteousness taken to extremes can become a form of evil all its own. And when evil gets pure enough, it can be a person's salvation. You see, this is every last corner of the world. The answer to everything under the sun isn't always the right answer. You know what I mean? No. You just lost me a little bit. Actually, more than a little bit, if you want the truth. Who's on the front of this one? Coon is on the front of this one. Um, there's something in one of the mailboxes. Aldisman, this space has become so corrupted that it's impossible to proceed up any further. Saddening. Can't go that way. Oh, gotta go this way. To the streets. Yay. And now, somehow, we just went from the streets back in here. There's an eyeball on the floor. I don't want to touch that shit. We just gonna save in case, you know, I touch that shit and that shit gonna kill me. Because I have a sneaky suspicion the eyeball is not healthy. Well, it looks like we're gonna get a good Oh, earthquake. We really gotta find that Nirvana. These tremors certainly are getting intense, aren't they? The school is probably starting to break down. Do you think it's the seventh pillar? It has awakened. I wish that book would stop talking to me. Who's there? That, that was the book, I think. So, it's the book. The Book of Shadows is talking. The Nirvana has awakened. The Nirvana? You mean the core? The souls of the witches? It can sense our approach. The Pillar 2 reacts to the Nirvana. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is the bastard that went insane earlier on. What's his name? I forget, it's like Takamine. I, it's something, and I seen, I, I, I seen him. I'm not crazy. I see him. Son of a bitch! Can't even move a couple feet. The sound of a monstrous explosion rang out, accompanied by a violent quake that rocked the very foundation of the school. Okay, this earthquake had triggered an unfortunate side effect. We fell through the floor, right? No, that happened in the first game. We're not gonna fall through more floors. Oh, the hole connecting to the underground passage had been completely sealed off. This meant the Mashida and the others would have no choice but to find another way out. Where are we? Which part of Heavenly Host is this? That's a very good question. Maybe it would be best if we stopped trying to put everything in context of the old Heavenly Host. Either way, the only choice we've got is to climb these stairs, so let's get moving. Oh, now I'm these guys. I want to be Yoshiki. Actually, I want to be because she's, you know, Jesus. I named her Grespeth Corpse, Matabuzz Tone Researcher, Yuki Fukasawa. Unknown various parts of the body appear to have been eaten. Decent. Decent. No, I won't be Yoshiki. Oh, clippy clip, right? Talky talk. We'd managed to escape through the hole before it collapsed and wend our way through mis no numerous passages, finally arriving at the base of the enormous bell tower. Wait, like the base base? As soon as we got there, though, however, there was another huge explosion. The whole school rocked beneath our feet. Ah! 
Because everything's falling apart, isn't it? Yuka's kind of on the ground. Um, I was certain the class rep and Aiko must have felt these blasts as well. I could only hope beyond hope that they were both all right. Monstrous explosions continued to echo through the bell tower repeatedly, and violent tremors shook us again and again, seemingly without end. Nada. The hell! The seventh pillar! It's all right. It's, it's, a, it's a light? It's a light. The Sephiroth of knowledge was, indeed, lit up, spewing its dis... disquieting green flames every which way. Green flames this time. I, Shinozaki. Let's go. I'll carry you, Naomi. Come on. Okay. Naomi looks like she'd be a bit heavy. I don't mean to sound rude, but she looks like she'd be a little bit heavy. Am I supposed to go up the stairs? Holy shit. If I have to go all the way up these fucking stairs, and then turn back because I made a mistake. Okay. Hi, guy with the hammer from the games that's now dead. I keep forgetting his name. He was a poor soul, but also a very bastard soul, but not a bad... Well, I mean, he killed a lot of people. He kind of did for Sachiko, though. Kind of sweet. Awful. Twisted. Sick. But sweet. Yeah, I would definitely think she'd be a little bit heavy. He seems to be trucking like a warrior, though. <clears throat> I mean, I would, too, but... Jesus you needed to. We did have to come over here. The spooky music's happening. Oh, about time you showed up. The Sephiroth of Knowledge wasn't the only thing to be found at the top of the tower. There, waiting for us on the landing, was Magari Mizuki, holding Satsuki Mizuhara by the neck. Oh! What? You! She... Okay, is she dead or is she okay? Is Satsuki dead times two now? Because I thought she died earlier. She looked at Suzuki who tumbled to the ground like a ragdoll. <laughs> Satsuki! She's alive, but only just. That's why I brought her along. Aiko and Ayumi have gone ahead to the core of the Nirvana. What? So Satsuki's not dead. This world doesn't exactly follow the rules of human logic and intellect. See, the Sephiroth of Knowledge is reacting to the Nirvana's awakening. The school's only got another few minutes at best. If you don't want to get crushed, you should probably use your Ever After Stones and get the fuck out of here. But what about you? Sachi broke mine. Magari flashed a bitter smile and showed off the rubble that was once a pair of Ever After Stones. She seemed almost proud of what she'd been through. Miss Kuhn, then proceeded, well, produced her custom-made PL Promotion Stones, which had also seen better days. They were full of cracks, with a strange blue gas seeping out here and there. Same here, I'm afraid. Rather than gaining spiritual energy, mine are losing it as we speak. Are you serious? Miss Kuhn. So, we're all fucked, right? <laughs> Guess we're all destined to die here then, huh? Really? This sucks ass. I wonder if Waldo's worried about me. Magari scratched her head and looked. For all the world like she'd resigned herself to her fate. It was a sight entirely unlike her. There wasn't anything we could do at this point but stand there and helplessly watch the pillar pulsate, knowing that it could blow at any moment. So, we're all fucked, right? And it was then, when we'd all resigned ourselves to our fates as Magadi had, and Miss Kuhn suddenly looked down at her wristwatch and spoke. Satoshi. Satoshi. Hi. Yes? Was I a good teacher in your world? Excuse me? Nakashima said her name once, I think. Miss Yui, was it? Y yeah? Why, how do you know about our world? Mizuto mentioned this before, didn't he? About how you can tell a lot of, from the color of a person's aura, and I can tell right away that you were from another time. A different past. Well, Miss Yoi was funny and kind of ditzy, and the best teacher we ever had, really. But in a lot of ways, you're exactly the same as her, Miss Kuhn. You're kind and fun. I love you too, Miss Kuhn. 
I was still straddling Satoshi's back and could barely form a coherent sentence, but I somehow knew if I were to ever oh, if I were ever to say it, that now would be the time. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Coon smiled well, brightly. I have a lot of regrets, you know. but what you said just you now makes them all seem that. insignificant. Those words are my saving grace. Even a self-proclaimed genius like you can get all sentimental from time to time, eh? I can make fast calculations, and I know a whole storehouse of information, but that just means I have an abnormal brain, nothing more. There's certainly nothing genius about it. Are you so fascinated, for example, by someone who's able to see precisely how much time she has left in this existence? Miss Kuhn turned to her watch so everyone could see it. The countdown... Well, the counter displayed the number 300, and it was counting down second by second. <laughs> that watch! <laughs> it's my life clock. I didn't want to waste a single second I had, you see. Life clock, a device capable of reading and displaying one's own lifespan. Ordinarily, I wouldn't put any stock in the accuracy of such a ridiculously sounding contraption, but this was Miss Coons we were talking about. Thinking back to everything she'd accomplished in a short time, we knew her, and all the technology she devised through PL, I couldn't help but believe every word she said. No matter how preposterous those words may have been, nor how much I wished them to be fabrications. So she knew she was going to die. Brilliant. So you shared your abilities with the world simply because people demanded it, and in doing so, you shaved years off your life. I'd heard your body had aged up to about 90 years and you were close to the end. Guess I heard right. Miss Kuhn smiled and slowly walked over to the pillar. I'm going to destroy this pillar. Everyone stand back. She held the other baby tooth from Sachi in her hand. With this child's spirit energy, I can do it. According to my calculations, it should work. Mrs. Kuhn? Always remember, your lives will go on, with or without me. No matter the hardships, don't ever give up. Mrs. Kuhn? Stay safe, everyone. No. Oh. I screamed and I cried and I lashed out. This wasn't right. This shouldn't have been the end for her. Nakashima? The hot springs in Satoshi's house can heal the body and mind alike. You should take a dip with Yuka again sometime. <laughs> And Kishinuma, make sure you take your quiz. I spoke with Mr. Yamasaki about it. I will. Come now, you two. Boy, shouldn't cry. You need to hurry. Neither this pillar nor I have much time left. No, Miss Kuhn. Oh, this is just depressing. Still on Satoshi's back, as he descended the stairs, I screamed. There had to be another way. There had to be. Magadi was the only one left who hadn't said anything yet. I won't forget you. There aren't many geniuses like you in this world. And the Machibas will withdraw from spiritual medicine. You have my word. I trust. You'll keep it. Also, I'll look after Aiko. You will? You did turn into a good guy, even though you slaughtered a bunch of innocent people for no reason. And with that, Magadi followed us down the stairs away from the pillar. Once Ms. Kuna can confirmed we were all out in range, she pressed her hand and Sachi's tooth upon the monolith. <laughs> she suddenly began to breathe heavier, as if she were running out of air. Her years were physically catching up to her. All at once, she began to feel as old as her body appeared. She looked down at her watch. There were only 20 seconds left. Jesus. I really don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to die. With nothing left to hold them back, the tears began to stream down Miss Coon's face. The counter was down to ten. Miss Coon's arm began to fuse with the pillar, as if she were being pulled in. So, I guess the fact that I don't want to die means I've lived a truly happy life. The upper portion of the bell tower lit up with a blinding flash and exploded with tremendous force. <laughs> The entire school shook harder than ever. Each of us was blown clean off the stairs and knocked unconscious in the process. A piece of Heavenly Host blew out, leaving an enormous crater in its wake. Do you know how depressing that is? A dimension of empty expanse, bright and white. A world without a single sound. There I stood, 
dumbfounded. I couldn't speak. Where am I? Is what I wanted to say. Satoshi. Miss Kuhn? It's like a miracle that I'm able to see you here. I was staring at my watch, thinking about how I wasn't afraid of dying. I lived my life knowing that my, when my lifespan ended, that would be it. I ex accepted my fate and resolved to do what needed to be done within the limited time I had. But then I met you, and I fell in love for the very first time. And when I thought about how much I wanted to live, the counter stopped. Love truly is main many splendorid. Even though you came from a different world and probably don't even remember the day we met, we're still connected. I wonder if you'll find yet another teacher in my place once you return to the real world. I'll be kind of jealous, but do say hi for me. To the me who isn't me, won't you? Bye-bye now. You broke through. And things just got a whole lot sadder. Thanks, game. I wanted a feels trip. It's exactly what I wanted. My face was coated in tears and snot. I stood up, arm outstretched, but there was nothing I could do. She was gone. Where am I? The feels. Oh! We're still on the ground. Decent. Are you okay, Yummy? Yeah, but the earthquake was incredible. Come on, we have to hurry. But I'm just going to end the episode here for today, so please comment, like, subscribe, tell me what you thought of the episode, and in the next one, maybe we'll see if we can fix some of this bullshit that's happening. Take care, till then, guys. Bye bye.